Hello, grade 12s. Welcome back. It's Economics with me, Spiwe. And just before the break, we were looking at the reasons for export promotion. And we discussed um, quite a few reasons as to why government would consider uh, promoting exports in a country. Just to recap on some of the reasons that we looked at, uh, we can say, uh, we said that the government uh, could um, achieve a significant export-led economic growth. Um, it can also help to enlarge the production capacity of the country. And then export markets are much bigger than local markets. We also discussed that. We also said that there could be more workers who could be employed as a result of this. And then also prices uh, could be reduced um, based on the fact that there's more um, economic activity happen, but also because government has put certain incentives in place in order to encourage local suppliers to produce more um, goods and services that could be exported uh, to other countries. So what are some of the methods when it comes to the export promotion? So previously we looked at the reasons and now we're going to look at the methods um, that could be used to support the export promotion. So methods used to support export promotion include um, incentives. We did chat a bit about incentives in our um, uh, previous discussion just before the ad break. So we said that the government supplies information on export markets research on new markets, um, concessions on transport charges, export credit, and so on, in order to stimulate um, exports as well. So there are a couple of things that government will put into place in order to encourage local suppliers to export more goods to other countries. So they would provide the following information. So they will give detailed information around the export markets because remember if you have the information then you go into that market space with a competitive advantage because you already know what to expect so government has this information so they will pass it on to local suppliers so that they can study the market and see if they can find a niche in that market and then they can support the goods and services that are required based on the information on the market also, government does extensive research on new markets. Uh, it's important that we continually um, identify or we, on a continuous basis, identify new markets that we can explore uh, because we want to grow our economy. Hence, you will see government being in discussion uh, with other countries in terms of economic policy and also international relations because it's important to establish good relations with other countries. Uh, we've seen over the past uh, few years that our government has been um, establishing um, international relations with Cuba, um, sending our local students to be trained as medical doctors in Cuba, and also getting doctors from Cuba to come and assist in our rural communities um, in the medical um, field. Um, so all of that is based on research, um, that this country has a lot of trained doctors, uh, but they might not have you know, enough employment opportunities for people or for medical doctors in that country, and therefore they entered into a discussion with South Africa where there's a, a huge need uh, for medical doctors, and then we ended up with a trade agreement to say, well, you can train our students uh, to become medical doctors and then we will take your trained or uh, newly qualified medical doctors and then we can bring them into our country and then they can gain experience working in the medical field. So that is based on research because if you don't um, have extensive research on new markets, then the chances of you failing are, are, are massive because you don't have enough information to make um, sound economic decisions. Um, also, certain concessions on transport charges because if you export or you import goods into the country, there are transport charges that are incurred because you're taking items from your country to another country and from that country to your own um, country. So transport plays an important role in ensuring that goods are received and also are taken to other countries um, that we are exp exporting our products to. And then um, export credit as well is important. You know, countries may not have the, ne the necessary um, um, cash or 
um, money to purchase or to pay for items immediately. Um, but then if there's credit um, given um, and, and a payment plan put into place, and that could encourage or will help to stimulate uh, more exports. So I think those are wonderful methods that a government can use in order to ensure um, that they stimulate this particular market. Right, now we're going to move on to subsidies. Now we've just looked at incentives and now we're moving right along to um, subsidies. These include direct and indirect. So what is a direct subsidy? So these are cash, cash uh, um, payments to exporters. So they are being paid up front. So you have a cash payment that is made to the people that export and then the indirect subsidies. These are refunds on import tariffs and general tax rebates. Okay, so remember we said earlier on um, in, in, in our previous um, lesson that uh, one of the methods or systems that the government could use to stimulate more economic um, activity is to reduce um, the um, tax rate um, so that consumers end up with more um, disposable income. So and also in this regard, if you want to encourage more exports, you've got to look at the tax rebate um, that is given by government because that is a measure uh, to stimulate and to encourage more economic activity. And then also the cash payments as well um, help um, in, 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 in stimulating more um, economic activity and ensuring that uh, we are able to export uh, more goods to other countries and bring in that uh, foreign currency into our economy. Then the next point that we're going to look at is the trade neutrality. So these are subsidies which are equal in size to import duties and they are paid. So subsidies equal in size to import duties are paid. Neutrality can be achieved through trade liberalization. So when you liberate um, your trade, then that will result or it will be as a result of the fact that you have provided subsidies um, in order to be liberal um, in your trade. So there are a couple of things that um, government or methods that government could use um, in order to encourage uh, or to promote export uh, production. So we've looked at incentives. Um, incentives are very important because there is more, more discussion, um, discussion around this in terms of export markets and the research that needs to be done, the concessions on transport and the, cre um, the export credit that could be um, provided to local suppliers and also granting them um, subsidies um, could also assist them um, in order to produce more and increase their production capacity um, in order to supply the volumes um, that are needed or that they are expected to supply. And then using the trade neutrality as well uh, will also help to create a more liberal um, trade environment for um, local suppliers to export goods and services. So what are some of the advantages of export promotion? So we've looked at the definition of what uh, free trade is. Uh, we've looked at reasons um, why government would um, support um, free trade. And then we also looked at methods that government could use to stimulate um, export um, activities. And now we're going to look at advantages um, of export promotion. So the, the, the couple of um, um, advantages that we need to look at um, in terms of export production. So the first one is the fact that th there are no limitations uh, to size and scale of market. Okay, so that's a huge um, an environment because if you're exporting your um, goods to other countries, so it could be um, countries in different um, continents. So the market space is so huge and, and there are no limitations in terms of the size and the scale of the market because here you are dealing with different continents, um, countries um, of different size and different population groups. So the, the market size there is incredible and if you are a local supplier and have the, 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 the right capacity in terms of production, you can actually do really well in, the, in this market space. Where else the local market is limited. There are limitations 
um, in the local market based on the fact that the, the, the population size um, and the income spending is limited to the number of people that live in that particular country. But as soon as you move out of your own country and you explore um, different countries and different continents, um, the, the, there are no limitations actually in terms of size and market scale. So this is a huge advantage um, if you are wanting to grow as a supplier and you want to interact with different continents and, and, and different communities um, in terms of supplying the required volumes of goods and services. So this is one exciting point um, that you can actually have a lot of discussion around. And I think even in, in class or with your friends, um, you can talk about the, the possibilities of not having limitations in, in terms of size and market scale. So I really like this um, example or this advantage, I must say. And then the next um, advantage is production based on cost and efficiency okay so the fact that you know you know that your production is based on cost and on efficiency efficiency plays a very important role uh, because earlier on i did say that now we are dealing with consumers that have um, advanced preferences and tastes when it comes to products so sometimes it's difficult um, for local suppliers to be able to meet those expectations um, that local consumers might have. So they might also have to rely on other countries who have more specialized systems in place and also that have the, the, the resources and the capacity uh, to produce those goods um, and in a most efficiently uh, manner and cost plays a very important role. Hence, when I, I, I discussed um, uh, some um, issues um, that uh, promote international trade on our previous lesson, uh, when we looked at climatic conditions and how they play a role in terms of lowering um, the cost per unit of certain goods and services. So a certain climate might make it easier uh, for certain products to grow, and then obviously they're going to end up with a huge surplus uh, which they are now going to um, export to other countries. But the cost in, in, in that particular country of making that product is cheaper. So cost plays a very important role. And having systems that are efficient um, in terms of service delivery, uh, delivery and ensuring that you produce a product of the right um, quality and in the right quantity at the best possible price. So price does play a very important role when we look at export promotion. And then the next point, there's an increase in domestic production. So when we say domestic production, we mean productions uh, or items or goods and services that are produced uh, within our country, so in South Africa specifically. So now that there's a huge demand um, and there are incentives uh, being put into place by government, so we are in a position to increase our production capacity. So by us increasing the production capacity, we are actually increasing the domestic production as well, uh, which will then contribute uh, towards the GDP. So it's important to have this economic activity happening because it does bring in huge um, um, uh, possibilities and, and also it does play a very important role when looking at economic growth. So it's important to look at cost and efficiency and but also uh, now that we are able to provide these two things, the cost and efficiency, then we are going to increase our domestic production as well, which is a good thing because if we increase our domestic production, that means that we are employing more people uh, from the households or uh, from the um, um, household factors or factor inputs. Uh, they are supplying labor to the firms and therefore they are earning a salary or a wage. And then the next point that we're going to look at is the exchange rates. Okay, so they will be more real because now you are dealing with um, different countries. So you're exporting um, items to other countries, but you're also bringing items from um, other countries as well. So in order for that trade to happen, obviously then the exchange rate needs to be taken into consideration. So remember we said the exchange rate was the value 
of the currency of that particular country. So when we look at the rand, our, the rand is our currency here in South Africa. And then when we compare it to the US dollar, so we might say that um, the one US dollar equals to um, 10 rands. So that would be the value of our currency, uh, but also the exchange rate, because if you export, um, then you need to be paid in rands because you are um, um, taking items to another country. But when you import, now you have to convert the rand into the dollar and then so that you can pay uh, for the goods and services in the currency of that particular country. So there will be more activity around the exchange rates because there is more international trade happening and you are not just focusing on the local environment, but you are exploring um, the international space, uh, which has no limitations in terms of size and also in terms of scale. So there are more opportunities uh, when you export because you are entering into a market where there's a huge need and it is so big that even though you do have other competitors, um, the pie or the pizza is so big that everybody actually gets a good slice. And that's the ideal situation when we look at you know, um, the world of economics, creating opportunities to grow the economy because your economic growth could also have a positive impact on another country's economic growth. So the interrelationship that exists between different countries, uh, because we are no longer self-sufficient, plays a very important role when we are looking at the world of economics. So just to quickly recap uh, some of the advantages. So we've spoken about the fact that there are no limitations when it comes to the size and the scale of the market. So there are endless opportunities in that space and then that production is based on cost and efficiency okay and we really like this because then we will find the supplier that has the best possible price and that has the good um, quality as well and then the, another good thing is that the, there will be an increase in the domestic uh, production the locally made goods and services uh, will increase based on the incentives um, that are put in place by government. And then also there will be a nice movement in the world of exchange rates uh, because of all this interaction that is happening with other countries. Well, let's take a short break and I will catch you right after this.